Welcome to the Think Yourself Healthy podcast, where you meet the intersection of mind, body, and soul. I'm your host, Heather Duranja, founder of Nutrition Vixen, registered dietitian, nutritionist, personal trainer, and cognitive behavioral specialist. I'm a mother, author, self-improvement junkie, and recovering perfectionist turned professional half-asser. Each week, I'll be bringing on a guest or a topic that will help you go from surviving to thriving. Are you with me? All right, here we go with today's episode. Hello, everybody. On today's show, we have Stephanie Kissling. Stephanie is launching a new division within her company called Boss Angels to support women who are determined and ready to create their best life through entrepreneurship. Boss Angels was established in support of women who are determined and ready to step forward into courage so that they too can own a successful company and their freedom to live life on their own terms. This desire to support women on their journey turned into an interview series where she has interviewed 21 powerhouse women entrepreneurs. It's called The Courageous Woman Revolution, Fuck Confidence, Be Courageous. Learn how to tap into your courage, launch a, launch a company, and live life on your terms. This is for women who are determined to start living life on their terms, make millions or any amount, but are challenged with taking the first step towards launching their company because of some belief that it takes confidence. It doesn't. It takes courage. And Stephanie wants to show you how to tap into yours. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for coming on today. I am so excited to have this conversation with you. Um, I was one of those lucky women to be invited to come on your show and talk about my experience around courage and launching my business, Nutrition Vixen. So I'm excited to share your story and your mission with all of the listeners. So thank you for being here today. Thank you so much, Heather. It's such a pleasure to be here. And you were truly like, doing that interview with you for the Courageous Women Revolution Summit, like your story was one of like true courage where you stepped so far out of your comfort zone to pursue your goals, your dreams into a place where you knew nobody and into a business that you had not even created yet, just trusting that this was your path. And I, the reason I started Boss Angels was because I know there are so many other women out there just like you that have that burning desire and they just need that, that push that everything is going to be okay if you just step forward. And it doesn't even matter how big the step is, just take the step because mm -hmm. as you start to take those steps, your courage builds. And the next thing you know, you're living this life that you just freaking love. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean... How blessed are we to live in Southern California on such a beautiful day? We're having this conversation. You're sitting on a rock out in nature. <laughs> and, you know, technology is providing us with the convenience to be able to do what we do, help other people, but do it on our terms. I mean, for me, being able to express the gratitude for the life that I live is just precious. It's something that I personally hold near and dear to my heart. And it breaks my heart to know that there are so many women out there and not just women, but so many women and men who right. aren't living life on their terms and with their authentic purpose first and foremost. So courage is definitely a huge component of that. So kind of talk to me, tell me, you know, how have you learned from failure? How did you get to this courageous woman that you are today? Uh, well, it's a daily practice, Ooh, right? Yes. <laughs> it's a, and it's a conscious effort also to say, wait a second, am I really, am I really showing up in the way that I want to be? And the, and so that I can have the type of life I want to have. And I know for me at a very, very young age, really, I started working really at a young age and I would hate when my friends could go and do something and I had to work. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's just got to be more to life than this. Like I want control of my life. I only have one of them and I want control of it. Right. Right. And so I knew at a very young age that, that 
that it was the path. And I didn't know what path that was at all. I didn't know how I was going to get there. And I stumbled every single step of the way. Every single step of the way felt like I was stumbling, except I was stumbling forward because every time I stumbled, I learned something. Yes. And trust me, like I had like a major breakdown. What day was it? Like Tuesday or Wednesday? Like I, I woke up and I was like, yes, this is the best day ever. And then like 20 seconds into a phone call with my coach, she said something that triggered me. Mm-hmm. And it brought up all of this sense of like unworthiness and pain. And I was just like a wreck. And, and then <laughs> it must've been something universal Tuesday because I was in the same boat and literally really? bald majority of the day yes. triggers galore. And I ended up having a three hour counseling session uh, with my, um, with my counselor. I, I work with an intuitive counselor and he's amazing. And I had so much clarity and I felt like allowing myself to feel what I was feeling, yeah. face the triggers take responsibility. It was just like, oh my God, game changer. So hopefully you're in a better space today. Well, honestly, you inspire me because I was, then I'm having conversations with my friends and I'm saying, I'm like, I got triggered and I'm like on a downward, downward spiral right now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they, you know, surrounding yourself one with friends who will be genuinely honest with you is so important also to your life journey, right? right. You need that people are going to be honest and people want to throw in the brutal. It's not brutal unless you receive it that way, right? right? Like you have the choice of how you're going to receive it. But they're like, Stephanie, you just need to feel the pain. Right. And I was like, nope. You know, like I'm one of those people that still challenges. I'm, I still face challenges where I, where I stuff it. So the fact that you gave yourself that time and you're like, wait a second, I need to feel this because if we don't feel it, then we harbor it and it comes out in other areas in our life right. that, that prevent, that cause that fear in us to not step forward. And so, I mean, I did give myself tons of grace that day. I didn't push myself as hard. Right. Um, you know, I journaled about it. I thought about it a lot. I did one of my dips, which I love to do, which is dipping in cold water in a, in a natural body of water, river or ocean. Nice. And And so I gave myself that grace, but you have to recognize that you're going to have those days. And that doesn't mean one that you're on the wrong path, right? It just means there's something for you to address. There's a lesson in there. There's a purpose for it. Yes. And so, and, and so allowing yourself to not let it take you down the rabbit hole, but just say, okay, what is the lesson here? Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of this? Even if I don't understand the purpose now, at least understanding that there is a purpose and that purpose will present itself at some point in your life. And you'll understand why you experience that pain or why that stumble hurt more than some of your other stumbles or whatever it might be. Right. Absolutely. I am so grateful for you to be so vulnerable and be able to talk openly about this because I think there's this false perception that as a, you know, I, I know that for myself, I get messages all the time and people are like, oh yeah, but your life is perfect. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> no, my life is far from perfect. I'm, I try to be as transparent as possible because I want people to know life is not an easy journey, but The beautiful thing about this journey is that there are specific lessons that we are here to be taught. Mm -hmm. And when we are in resistance with self, it, we tend to call in more of those trauma type experiences that are trying to get our attention to learn the lesson. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, this week with this, um, you know, situation that occurred on Tuesday, I recognized like, oh my gosh, I had responsibility in all of these things that happened because I wasn't learning the lesson. So each time that I walked out of a situation, and for me, one of the core root problems um, within self is that I couldn't trust myself Mm. and I had the ability to take care and provide for myself financially. There was always this fear that I couldn't do it. So I was seeking, I sought out um, safety in terms Mm -hmm. of, you know, being secure. And I put myself in situations where I was maybe financially secure, 
But the reality is, is that I wasn't being authentic to myself. I wasn't honoring what my purpose here on life was. So things kept presenting themselves. I kept feeling in a negative way and ignoring that the reality was I'm in this situation because I'm seeking safety and security. Mm -hmm. And if I can step out of that safety and security and trust that I have everything I need to be able to take care of myself and be safe and be secure, right. I'm going to be fine. And so as I had this situation that occurred um, on Tuesday, <laughs> I recognized this pattern. Oh, I left that. It wasn't good. That was a dark situation. And then I stepped into an even darker situation <laughs> and then stepped into an even darker, darker <laughs> situation. And I'm like, oh, it's because I wasn't learning the lesson. Well, yeah. the responsibility that I have to own is that I was choosing not to trust. I was choosing not to trust myself. And once I was able to recognize and take responsibility for that, it was like all of those traumas I had experienced that were there for me to learn to trust myself, that weight, that weighted blanket I was carrying, it was just like psh, gone. So I'm super excited. Like I, I feel like I have freed up so much space for what's next. And I don't need to know what, what next is. I just know there's something big coming and I'm super excited to be present and receive whatever it is. And that's the big thing. I mean, thank you for sharing that because, because if we don't address it, it keeps coming back. And I think so many of us as women actually don't trust ourselves mm -hmm. because you were told you've got to be responsible for yourself. You got to get your own degrees. You got to get your own jobs. Like you can't trust a man. Like, not everybody, but a well, lot I was of told the opposite. Oh, really? Yeah. As a little girl, I used to hear, and God bless my grandmother, but <laughs> she used to tell me, you may not be smart, but you're pretty. Oh, you will no. find a man to take care of you. So yeah, that's where all those limiting beliefs and, and stories in my head started. <laughs> Well, I think that's interesting. So you and I have had two totally different lifestyles where my mom was like, you can't trust men. Your grandma was like, you can only trust men to mm -hmm. be able to provide for you. And regardless of the story, yes, the story is you can't do it on your own. Right. Yep. Or you can't, or you, or you can only trust in yourself. And you're kind of like, well, wait a second. Right. I have a trust issue of like, if, how do I trust other people? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So it's, it's interesting how our, our childhood traumas will resurface and it's really those things that we hold on to that we take ownership of that prevents us from stepping forward into our courage to start living the life that we truly gen and I believe this if everybody sits quietly just for a moment. Mm -hmm. They're going to feel that sense of like, wait, there's something more. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're always questioning like, what's our purpose on, in, on this planet, right? And a lot of us fall into this, like, what's the meaning of life? Like, why am I here? And it's because we are not doing what we were called to do. We're not sitting in our purpose and saying like, okay, that's actually freaking ass frightening, like so scary because it's so in an opposite direction of what I was told, how I was raised, what I'm doing currently, but it's not the, the, the voice, the nudge, the feeling in my gut is not going away. Right. And it's those moments that when you step into it, even when you're stumbling and you're failing and you're like, this is fucking what am I doing? Right. You keep stepping forward because you're perp you're on your purpose and you're on your path and it's calling you forward even though you're making the mistakes. Right. And even when you're making the mistakes, you still have this sense of satisfaction. Like I was telling my friends, like, I don't understand. Like I'm genuinely a happy person and now I'm crying. So am I not happy? Am I that clueless about who I am? Like, I don't understand. Like, we're so judging of ourselves, aren't we? <laughs> so it's judging. So terrible. Yes. And so they were like, and that's exactly what they told me. They're like, stop criticizing yourself so hard. Like, yeah. stop it. Like, it's normal to have feelings. And just because you're crying today doesn't mean you're not happy. You don't have to go down the rabbit hole of like, maybe I'm not happy. Right. And <laughs> it's and, amazing yeah. what we can convince ourselves of. If we allow ourselves to ha have those thoughts, I, 
I, when I coach clients, I tell them all the time, in 2018, I was in a really bad mental space. Um, it, it was a really dark place for me. And I was having the, I like to call it the toilet bowl, toilet bowl spiral of thoughts where I have one and then I'm just flushing down. And so whenever I start to recognize that taking control, I have to quickly mm -hmm. shift my thought process from here's how I feel mm -hmm. to how do I want to feel? Because if yeah. I keep thinking about how I'm feeling, that fear, that panic, that anxiety creeps in and just starts pulling you down. And so I like to encourage people, you know, to have some words that they can identify with, with how they actually want to feel when they're in that spiral mm -hmm. so that they can pull themselves up out of that more quickly because it's just human nature. We're mm -hmm. just designed to doubt <laughs> and question mm -hmm. and judge. Yeah. And so I think more people, people don't realize that they actually have to put practice into thinking differently. We have to retrain that neuro system to start having a different default approach rather than always approaching it from that judgmental negative space. Absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Like you, you have to, one, recognize the feeling and go, okay, it's just a moment. This mm -hmm. is just a moment. And I can choose to accept this moment as my reality forever, or I can choose to accept this moment as my reality right now. Right. And making, like you said, making that conscious effort to say like, nope, it's just a feeling right now and it feels pretty shitty mm -hmm. and that's okay. Right. It's still, is, it's still just part of life and just moving forward. And it's so interesting. And I, this is something I would just love to figure out, but like, why as humans do we always focus on the bad right away? Like I have so much good stuff happening all around me. And then all of a sudden I let one trigger put down in my mind that all of it was like not true. Right. And it's like all I had to do was really just stop and look around. And even, even if you feel like you have nothing, stop and look around because you have a lot. Right. You have a lot. And you can hang on to those moments and say, okay, this sucks right now. And I'm still going to step forward. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to step forward because this is what I'm called to do because this is what feels right. Right. And what's the lesson, what's the purpose around this emotion, this feeling, this moment, mm -hmm. and then breathing through it. Right. You know, unfortunately, I feel that majority of the population as human nature is addicted to being in that stress state because that's the only way they know how to thrive. So it's a default thing that happens that takes us down that negative thinking pattern, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we think about our environmental exposures to negativity, one of the, one of the things that like when I'm working with someone and they're complaining that they have a lot of anxiety, there's a lot of depression, they're having difficulty with sleeping, but everything in their life is perfect. They're like, I don't understand. Like, it doesn't make any sense. I have a great husband. I have healthy, beautiful, you know, um, successful children. I've got a home. I've got food on the table. Like, I've got a fulfilling career and they're just going on and on. And they're like, it doesn't make sense why I feel this way. I'm like, do you watch the news? <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. like, because if so, we're going to have to stop watching the news. My mother sent me a text the other day about this, about that virus, the uh, coronavirus that's going yeah. around and how there's two reported it's coming cases. to the U S it's like in California. If there's two reported cases of females in orange County and my mom's texting me because she knows that I have a weakened immune system and that I am more at risk than the average person of not being able to fight something off. So I understand she has legitimate concern, right? But this concern has turned into overwhelming fear that is literally paralyzing her and a stress response in her own body, which is weakening her immune system. So finally, I had to say, look, mom, here's the reality. There is always a plan. If I get the flu and I die from the flu, that was part of the plan. I can yeah. accept that. I am okay with that. And you need to be as well turn yeah. the fucking news off now. Like if yeah. you text me again, I am going to call one of my brothers, have them go over and remove the TV from your house. 
but we, we are, I call it programming. I mean, there's a reason that they called when TVs came out in the 1950s, television program, they program us to think and respond in a certain way. And unfortunately, majority of what's on TV and what we see in, in uh, the media is around creating panic and fear in people, which is, you know, yeah. a shame. It so. is. It really is. I, yeah, I don't even have TV in my house anymore because one, it's just a time suck. Yeah. I agree. I'm way less productive. And, and then two, it's like, I know that they're just feeding me what they want to feed me. Right. Yeah. And I, and I don't necessarily want that. And it can, it can just put you in this, this bad, bad, sad mindset. As you think like all these people that are suffering, there's also a lot of people who aren't. Right. So let's focus on the happiness in the world and not the, not the suffering, not that we ignore the suffering. We need to be aware that there are people who are suffering, but it shouldn't be the focal point of every news story. Right. It should be like, okay, well, what's, what's something that somebody did well today? Right. I agree. Yeah. And that's actually one of the first questions I ask my clients when we hop on calls. You know, they're always approaching it with, oh God, I'm going to have to tell Heather all the things that I didn't do well. And I, I always blow them away because I'm like, well, let's first talk about what you did well. Let's celebrate yeah. what you did well. Let's not focus so much on what you didn't, in your eyes, do as well. We have unrealistic expectations for ourselves. The reality that we try to create isn't... <laughs> isn't an actual realistic approach. And so mm -hmm. it's never going to be obtainable, which means we're never going to be good enough. And we're just stuck in that vicious rut of self-sabotage. Um, yeah. So anyway, we, we could yeah. go off on a whole tangent. Yeah. Of, you know, I do the time. same thing. I, I also have my training Academy sky angels where I train corporate flight attendants and, and it, I push them really hard. It's a very intensive boot camp for a reason because they're, about to enter into an industry that's very demanding. Mm -hmm. And after every drill that they do at the end of the day, I say, okay, what's one thing that you're proud of? And what's one thing you want to improve? Yes. You know, and it's so interesting because every single time they're like, I don't know what I'm proud of, but I'll tell you what I want to improve. And I'm like, nope, we're not starting with what you want to improve. We're going to start with what you're proud of. Right. And we'll sit there in silence for a while and I won't let them out of this drill. And then finally they're like, well, I'm proud of, and it's like, great. Like, don't be afraid to give yourself a compliment 100%. also, you yeah. know, I think people are like, Oh, is yes. Be humble, but also be proud of your accomplishments and Absolutely. shout them from the rooftops because those are your wins. Mm -hmm. And if you're suffocating them, then how are you ever going to feel good? How are you ever going to want to move and push forward through the mistakes and the failures? If you're not also then celebrating like, wow, I'm really proud of myself that I did that. And it doesn't matter how big or small it is. It right. doesn't matter. It could be like, I'm so proud of myself that I actually got through like 10 of my emails that have been like bugging me for, yes. you know, that have Absolutely. been in the back of my mind. It's like those celebrating those small wins also will make those failures big or small, less frightening to experience. Mm -hmm. Cause you're like, but I also have some great wins over here too. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's a shame that it's so difficult for us to accept the good and practice the gratitude um, I know for myself personally, one of one of the biggest gifts I gave myself was the gift of positive affirmation. Mm -hmm. And when I first started doing positive affirmations, it was hard. Yeah. <laughs> it was so hard. I would say these things to myself and I'd be like, oh, bullshit. Like, uh-uh, you don't really believe that about yourself. And it's so- I would find myself being in resistance to that practice. And so then I recognized, okay, I need another tool to help practice this positive affirmation. And I found this amazing app that you can download. It's called Think Up. Are you familiar with it? No, I'm not. Okay. This thing was a game changer for me because what it allowed me to do is it allowed me to go into the app pick positive affirmations. And there's like so many categories. You can apply it to any kind of component of your life, or you can record your own specific affirmation that you want to say. And so I would go in, record these affirmations of my voice saying mm -hmm. to me these amazing things. 
And then I put it on a loop. So I have over an hour's worth of positive affirmations of me delivering to myself all of this amazing information about me and what I am worthy and deserving of having. So in the morning when I'm getting out of the shower and I'm putting my makeup on and tidying up my room, making my breakfast, this is what I'm pumping my brain full of. So that by the time my feet hit the floor and I'm ready to face the day, no matter what circumstance is thrown at me, I am going to be able to respond in a much more positive manner because I'm like, I'm, I'm a badass. Like yeah. I'm literally a badass and no matter <laughs> what happens, this is going to be a really damn good day. Yeah. So that was a practice that took time and it's something I still have to practice. Like I'm yeah. constantly still having to record new affirmations when things get triggered and I recognize, Oh, I need some more work there. Okay. Let's write yeah. that <laughs> list. And then I'll go in and record an affirmation around whatever that is and then start pumping my brain full of that. I'm a real big promoter of trying to find ways to sneak subconsciously into our brain that mm -hmm. aren't going to require a lot of energy and effort on our part. It mm -hmm. was requiring a lot of energy and effort for me to stand in front of a mirror and say things mm -hmm. to myself. Mm -hmm. It didn't take any effort to listen mm -hmm. to myself saying these things. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that practice. As you're sharing that story, um, I went through a, a pretty bad breakup with a man I thought was going to be my forever. And I was talking to a relationship coach at the time that I had hired to try and bring our relationship back together. But my boyfriend at the time had zero interest. And so he became my relationship coach. And he was actually the one that helped me realize how unhealthy the relationship was. Mm -hmm. And then I had a lot of healing because I'm like, what? Like, I, how did I not see this? Right. Like, or right. how come I accepted it? for so long. And his thing was the same thing. He's like, you're, you're going to record yourself telling you how worthy you are of having the type of love that you want, like write it out and then you're going to record it. And he's like, I need, I need it tonight. Like it has to be done tonight. And it's hard because yes. it's hard. And then as you're, as you're doing it, you're crying too. Cause you're like, wow, like I do deserve this. I am worthy of this. Like, mm -hmm. and it just reminds you, like you said, hearing it in your own voice, you talking to you saying, hold up, right. by the way, you deserve this type of man, this type of relationship. You deserve for them to show up for you that way. And then same thing, like you're doing just in life. Like mm -hmm. this is how amazing and kick-ass you are, Heather. Like, you're, you can do anything, you can conquer anything, even when, like you said, going down your toilet drain for right. a toilet flush, like you can reconnect with that and you can play that at any time. And I think that's the simplest practice that one can do. And this also is a true testament of how important coaching is, mm -hmm. right? And that's having true. somebody, because throughout this conversation, you and I have mentioned various different coaches that have helped us along our journey to pave the path. Mm -hmm. So that when we hit these roadblocks and we hit these resistance that we have somebody who can, who can check, who can kind of get us quicker out of that, yeah. right? Or give us the tools to get right. through it. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a big promoter of investing in yourself. I had just mm -hmm. recorded an interview yesterday and I said that, you know, for 2019, I invested a little over $50,000 in myself through personal and professional development. And it was yeah. honestly one of the best gifts I could have given myself um, because there's just so much amazingness. And a lot of times when we are thinking about investing in programs, hiring a coach, we don't necessarily see the return on our investment right away. Yeah. But long, long term, that return on the investment is priceless with um, the skills and the knowledge and the tools that we actually acquire along that, that help us get to that next phase where now we can actually utilize those things. So to piggyback with positive affirmation, when I needed to increase my prices as a coach, that was something I was so scared to do. I was like, oh my God, I can't raise my prices. Like no one's going to hire me. You know, no one's going to want to work with me. And through positive affirmation, as I really started really being able to identify my worth and my deservingness, I recognized I 
definitely need to increase my prices. Like this is not sustainable. And if I want to be able to bring my best self to the table for that, that client, I'm going to have to reduce how many clients I'm working with so that right. I have the time energy available to invest back into that person. And if I'm trying to take on 20 clients a week, like, right. no, that's not right. realistic. So yeah, I feel then you're defeating the whole point of this, of having a lifestyle, not because you're not serving, you're not giving to serve. Of course right. you are, but you also want the quality of your serving who you're serving to, right. to be at the level you want. Right. And I want to just one rewind and give you a huge shout out because, uh, on when you and I were doing the courageous woman revolution and I was interviewing you, you shared that you moved to orange County with $500 in your pocket. Right. You just dropped a bomb that you spent $50,000 in right. personal development last yeah. year. <laughs> So I want to point that out though for the listeners because so many of us will create an excuse for ourselves. I don't have the money. I don't have the time, et cetera, et cetera. Like, well, of course, Heather's amazing. She just spent $50,000 on coaching and it's like, hold up though. How right. did she get there? Yeah. You first had to step into courage and look what happens when you step into courage. Look at the lifestyle you've created for yourself because you step forward into your courage, because you followed your purpose and your path, regardless of the fact that you didn't even freaking know what you were going to do. Right. You just knew you were called to California and you just knew you were called to do something to help other people. You're just called to serve other people. And Thank here you've been able to create a, yeah. And here you've been able to create a lifestyle for yourself where you can keep giving to yourself so that you can continue to build this lifestyle to give back to yourself first so that you can give back even more to others right. and make an even bigger impact. And this is, I think, where so many people are, are doing a disservice to society mm -hmm. because their message, their story, the way that they can coach is going to resonate with somebody that's going to change their life for them. Right. Yeah. Thank you for pointing that out and acknowledging that because honestly, it is something that I do forget because... <laughs> <laughs> the journey has been long and it, you know, it's had a lot of pain points along the way. After I moved out to California, I was able within the first year of being out here, I saved up $20,000. Okay. I went from living in the Midwest <laughs> where it's extremely yeah. affordable to transferring to one of the most expensive yeah. states with only 500 bucks in my pocket and zero clientele. <laughs> and right. so- I was able to save up $20,000 that first year and I invested back into the business by hiring this marketing professional. And um, ultimately, this was going to be for me to launch this program that I had worked two years on developing, put a ton of energy and effort into it. And I hire this woman, I give her the 20 grand, now we're supposed to have this marketing plan. She's going to build me out this click funnel system. I'm going to be a millionaire by 60 days from now. <laughs> and then she took my money and ran yeah. and never wow. delivered. And wow. I remember that being a very, very defeating moment where I questioned every single decision that I have ever made. Like, why am I doing this? I just yeah. need to go get a job serving. I, I can't do this anymore. It's too hard. Yeah. All of the stories. Right. All of the stories. This must not be my path. I was wrong. Everybody was right. I was wrong. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And of course, you know, I have to disclose to my friends and family what happened. And everyone's like, well, we knew. We you told know? you so. Yeah. And then I'm sitting there feeling. <laughs> Good so thing you're pretty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you are awesome. It literally, it literally was one of those moments where I had to step back, tune out the noise, the noise that I was creating for myself and ask myself, what does your heart believe? Is this really it? Are you really going to let this stop you? Is this going to be the thing that stops you from continuing forward? Like, uh-uh, I don't think so. And it was hard, but I chose, I chose, I said, you know what, this is a learning lesson. 
I will mm -hmm. never give $20,000 up front to a person without having some sort of service yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, those are the hard lessons. Yes. I, have, I have a bag full of those lessons yes. uh, over the nine years that I've been in business. And yes, there are moments where I'm like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Like, I'm so exhausted. Mm-hmm. I'm so exhausted and I just keep feeling like I'm hitting my head against a wall. Right. And then there's still that seed that's there that's like, but, and you're like, okay, the fact that that, even if it's a tiny little light, the fact that that light is still somewhere in there burning, even if it's just kind of smoldering and smoking at this point, like it's not out. Right. And re again, refocusing and just saying like, okay, this sucks right now, mm -hmm. but that flame is still there and I'm going to move forward. And guess what? God, the universe will challenge us to make sure that we want what we want as badly as we do. And if not, it redirects us. Right. So when we're on, when we're having those hard days and we feel like there's no hope, how do we get back on track? How do we start? Where do we go? Uh, that's a great question for me. What I do is I think like you, you kind of touched on it. Like I could go into Starbucks. I'm like, there's always Starbucks. And I'm like, okay, this is what my life would look like if I didn't do what I'm doing right now. I'd go get a job at Starbucks or somewhere where I have an employer. And this is what my life would start looking like. Mm -hmm. And then I go, okay, is that the life that I want? Is that the life that's going to make me happy? Right. And if that answer is no, then I turn the heat back on over here and I say, keep moving forward. This right. moment sucks, but that life sucks more. Right. Well, I know for myself, whenever I start questioning, let's say I don't get a client who resigns and all of a sudden my income takes a significant dip and I'm forecasting and going, oh my God, I'm not going to make it next month. Like it's not going to happen for me. And I'm like, oh my God, I need to look on Indeed and see what jobs are hiring. Yeah. And then I'm like looking at the jobs and I'm going, everything inside me is like, Ugh, yuck, yeah, no. And then I say to myself, Heather, is you going and getting the job, the answer to you actually being able to do what you were sent here to do? No, because what's going to happen is I, whether it's yeah. a part-time job or a full-time job, I'm going to get sucked into that cycle and I'm going to be so energetically drained that by the time I do get home and have the availability to work on my passion project, it's not going to happen. And so that's when I choose, yeah. nope, you're going to trust that you are going to be provided for. And seriously, as soon as I shift energetically from that state to that state, all of the sudden I'll get an email, I'll get a phone call and it will be something completely unexpected. Like some company will call me yeah. up and they're like, Hey, we want to do a consulting gig with you. And it usually pays like quadruple what I would get working with that one client. But if I didn't open up that pathway to receive it, right. it would never come. And I think that that's right. what a lot of us do. You know, when yeah. we're contemplating entrepreneurship, we're doing the grind, we're working that nine to five thinking, I'm going to get there, I'm going to get there, but we're never in an energetic place where we can actually cross yeah. over because we don't trust fully in ourselves. Mm -hmm. So taking the leap of faith, stepping out, knowing that it's not going to be easy, but I'm going all in. Yeah. That's when the beauty, the magic, the like when you're passionate about something, it comes across and people are like, okay, well, I want to do what you're doing because I want to feel like you're feeling. Yeah. <laughs> energy is just so contagious. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's like, it's such a gift. It is such a gift. It is such a gift. And I think, I, I, yes, I agree with everything you're saying. And I think it's, it's all of those things, right? It's your purpose, it's your passion, and it's your vision. Because at some point, all of those dip just a little bit. And so if you can still, not all at the same time, right? And so right. usually like for, for me, my story was like, but this was my vision for my life. And so mm -hmm. this, this, this is the purpose. This is the path to get me to that vision. Mm -hmm. You reconnect with your passion. Like, is this my passion, right? Because you have a vision also for your life, right? And so sometimes it's just like, okay, right now I'm not feeling passionate about it because maybe 
whatever's happening in my life that's making it hard for me to be totally connected. And that's when you get to shift and go, okay, why am I not connected? What shifts do I need to make in order to reconnect myself with this passion, with this purpose right. and with vision, right? And so not being afraid to do trial and error also. I think yeah. so many people think they need to know the answer of what they're going to do at the very beginning and that they can't shift from that. Mm -hmm. And it's like my company has evolved. I think every single day it is evolving in some way and it's just shifting in some way Absolutely. and not being so married to your original idea that you right. actually get off purpose or off passion. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So how does, how does someone know when they're on their right path? Ooh, the challenging questions are now coming out. Okay. So <laughs> how does somebody know? I, I don't, I, that's going to be unique to everybody, right? Like it's just unique to you. Like you can't, nobody's going to be able to point and go like Heather's in the right direction. Stephanie's on the right path. Like that is just the feeling that, you know, and I think it does go back to, is there still something burning inside of me? That's telling me that this is the right direction, even though everybody else is telling me it's not, I have the naysayers. I have everybody else telling me it's going to fail. Like I even feel like I'm failing right now but I still have this desire inside of me that, that I can't quit. Right. I like to say that when we are being challenged or activated <laughs> and we take those activations, challenges as a, this is the sign to quit, mm -hmm. that's when we typically know we're on our right path because in order to evolve to that next step, that activation is going to force us to choose to mm -hmm. either move forward, learn whatever lesson in that challenge we are meant to learn and then be able to grow in a positive way that's going to serve our greater purpose, yeah. you know, help us get closer to fulfilling that passion. So I like to say that when we feel uncomfortable and we have those activations, those challenges, that's usually a good sign we're on the right path. It's never going to be easy. If it was easy, we wouldn't evolve. And if we're not evolving, we're not growing into that higher, higher right. yeah. purpose, yes. right? That yeah. higher self that we're meant to, to be here to do. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So I think, it's and I think it's defining easy too. Like, you know, we use the words hard and easy, but I think those are too simplistic of words to mm -hmm. actually use for what we're, what you and I are talking about and what we understand is relatable to business. And, um, there's going to be moments where you're like, I'm feeling like I got that. And so that's your feeling of like, this is easy. And then there's a moments of that you fail and you're like, this is hard. And right. so it's not a matter of like business is going to be hard or like your path is going to be hard. It's just a matter of, am I taking in a lesson right now? Or am I actually now moving forward with that lesson and growing? Right. And that's when it feels easy. That's when I'm like, okay, I got this. I got this. And I remember when I first started my company, oh, like, like a year, two years into it, I remember I'm like, when am I going to stop learning? When am I just going to know how to do this? I'm so tired of like the lessons, like no more lessons, just get it done, you know? And right. I remember, I think I was talking to my mentor at the time and he just, kind of, he didn't say anything. He kind of let me have my little like tensor, tensor, tensor tantrum, but he was like, and I now like going back, looking at his look, it's like the lessons never stop. The learning never stops. Right. And so once we accept that, then it doesn't feel so hard when those lessons are coming to us right. because we're like, okay, this is, this is growing. The reason it feels hard right now is because I'm stepping into new territory it's right. because I'm doing something new. And when we're doing something new, it feels hard because it's our first time, mm -hmm. but going in, you know, I always talk about courage, but that's where confidence comes from. People want to start off confident, but mm -hmm. confidence is something that you do or you, you become, and you learn when you actually start learning something new and you become right. more, more confident in those areas. Courage is something that's a choice. Like I'm going to do this. Like, mm -hmm. you know, there's a saying courage doesn't always roar, but it's the silent voice at the end of the night, night saying, I'll try again tomorrow. Right. And, and that's that voice. That's that thing that's saying, just keep stepping forward. Mm -hmm. You don't know where you're going. Just step forward. Right. And the confidence comes from, I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to learn. Well, we tend to be creatures of habit, right? We like to do the same things over and over. We like to know what to expect. 
And so when we decide to be courageous, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of unknown that creates a lot of fear and a lot of anxiety that yes. typically will either keep us stuck in our tracks, in the familiarity of our misery, or we will choose, I'm going to take the leap of faith and be courageous and just see what happens. And mm -hmm. so I know for myself, I've really leaned into that the you know the last decade of my life and i'm so grateful for having that courage as a gift to be able to utilize to create something better for myself yeah and like and you have i mean like you know, it's amazing you know and to follow that up everybody can do it exactly everybody can do it there's not one it's person that's more privileged intelligent smart right like none of it everybody we're all starting on the same playing field it's whether it's how you want to play the game absolutely right? and if yeah, you're gonna you and i you and i are not two privileged people who were gifted these opportunities in life we were no. both courageous enough to know that we are worthy and deserving of whatever is on the other side if we just yeah. trust in the process Yes, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And know that it's going to require a lot of learning. <laughs> a lot of learning, yes. a lot of learning that yes. then you can use to help other people too. Like I love, like I love that part, you know, you yes. see people at these other stages and you're like, okay, don't worry. Like everything's going to be okay. You're at the right stage. These right. feelings like the feeling are normal feelings. Like these feelings of fear, this feeling of distrust, this feeling of you know, whatever that is, like those are all normal feelings. So don't let them be the things that hold you back. I love that you bring that up because I feel like imposter syndrome is something that keeps a lot of people from being able to take action and actually start pursuing their best life because they think, well, I'm not there yet. I'm not yeah. there yet. I'm not yeah. there yet. The reality is you just need to be one or two steps ahead of something else in order to be able to provide a service that is needed. And so we don't have to be perfect. I know for myself, I will continue to evolve. And as I evolve, so will my clientele. Right. I might have started off working with people who just wanted to learn how to eat healthier, right? Like teaching those basic pyramid type of principles. But as I evolved as a practitioner, now I'm able to really get really specific and niche down to where I help women who struggle with autoimmune disease, who are facing all of these really complicated situations, yeah. and I'm able to take them from surviving to thriving. Well, when I started my practice, you know, a long time ago, that wasn't the case. I didn't yeah. have the skills, the tools, the knowledge that I have today to apply to that specific niche market. So right. imposter syndrome was something that did keep me paralyzed for many, many years. I think I told you in our original interview, I bought my web domain for Nutrition Vixen in 2011. I didn't do anything with it until 2015. Mm. I sat on it for years. And yeah. if I would have just taken one action step in 2011 with building that website, I can yeah. really imagine who I could be helping today had right. I just had the courage to take the initiative to say, you know what, I'm just going to start here and that's okay. I don't have to be where everyone else is. You so, really, yeah. It's exciting to think mm -hmm. that, you know, I think this is where we get stuck in our heads and we think, I'm not there. We see whoever it is that we're following on Instagram and we're like, oh, I want to I be like them. I want to do what they're doing. Well, they didn't start there. Right. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> it didn't start there. Like they Mind blowing. So, so in such a different place. So I, I feel transparency and having conversations like you and I are, are having today is so important to remind people that we're all human. You and I don't possess some special gift that said, you're entitled, you're entitled, this is gonna happen for you. Right. Well, no. Yeah. We have been through some nasty situations and we've had the courage to be able to step up, learn a lesson, and evolve and grow. And as we do that, so does our businesses and so do our audiences. And that's exciting. 
it is exciting. I like to call my stumbling box, like they're building my foundation right like every stumbling box is building a super strong foundation for you to build your life on and build your business on and this this doesn't have to just apply to women and men who are wanting to do a business this applies to men and women who just want to create a different life for themselves and you can do that and so many times we're like I can't because I have kiddos or I can't because my schedule's so busy already and it's like you can you just have to repurpose your time absolutely yeah I I agree with you so wholeheartedly. Stephanie, I appreciate you coming on today and sitting on that rock. I'm sure your bum bum is probably- With my hat head. Now I want to put my hat back on. (laughs) Your bum's probably numb and ready to to get up. But I appreciate you taking the time, making the space to have this conversation. So tell tell the audience, where can they find you? What kind of exciting things does Boss Angels have coming at them? Yes. All right. So of course you can find us on social media. You can find the courageous woman revolution at the courageous woman revolution. Um, we're only are in social media right now. It's it's like, here it is. This is a brand new company. It's a brand new division within sky angels. Like I am stepping forward into it and I am learning on the way and exactly what it's going to be. I don't know yet. I just know that I've been called to do it. I've been called to serve you determined women who are ready to step forward and change their life. And if it's the angle is entrepreneurship, like I want to support you in that. If your angle is just to create a schedule that allows you to live your best life, like we can help you there too. This is about you stepping forward into your courage so you can create your best life and you can start enjoying it too. And not saying you don't enjoy it. I'm just saying there, if there's still something that's saying there's more to life, the answer is yes, there is. And you have the opportunity to step forward into that. And then um, if you want to just follow, follow me, I'm Stephanie underscore Kissling, And I have a weird spelling to my name, but I'm sure Heather will. Yeah, I'll link that down somewhere. Um, and then if you want to look and just see what I've been doing for the last nine years with Sky Angels, the domain is www.flyskyangels.com. And that's where I've been doing, providing the hospitality on private jets for the last nine years. Wow. By the way, I did not know anything about private aviation. I, we were, we grew up very poor. I rode the Amtrak to and from my parents' house by myself as a little kid with my eight-year-old brother. Wow. I was five at the time. So private aviation, I didn't even know existed when I started my company. I was told about it and I was like, okay, that sounds like a great business to get into. Like I'm going for it. Wow. Um, and spent three years researching the industry. So you can do whatever you want, even if you have no idea about the field you want to get into. Like Heather was saying, like it, you're, you will figure it out. And for the last nine years, it's been a roller coaster of up and down. However, I would never, ever take back a single moment of that because of the lifestyle I've been able to live and create for myself and my family by just doing it, just doing it. I love it. That's beautiful. (laughs) I actually have a girlfriend who's based out of Miami who got into that and I was, I follow her on social media, right? And so back in 2018, when I was in that pivotal place of like, am I really meant to do this? I was like, but what about that? That was so fun. Um, But I I chose differently. I chose to stay on course and keep seeking my path. But yeah, hats off to all those women and men out there who are getting to travel and experience all of these luxurious situations and circumstances. Um, What a blast. So yeah, it really is. It really is. It's a great lifestyle. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you coming on and spending time with us today. I will link in the show notes, all of your social media, your website, everything. So people can find you. And for the 21 powerhouse women entrepreneurs that you interviewed, are those still up? Is that something that they can still access? Yes, actually, thank you for that. Yes, so that website to access that, we actually have wrapped up that online show. However, we're doing some um, replays. And so okay. you can go ahead and you can still watch those. And so that is actually bossangels.courageouswomanrevolution.com. Okay, we'll make sure to link that so they can okay. go and check those interviews out. I know you had some really powerhouse women on there, some really exciting stuff. And I grateful to have been one of them. So thank you. My pleasure. It was so fun. And I, 
this is why I love what we do. You know, we're reaching out to other women. We're building a strong community of strong, determined women who are supporting each other. Absolutely. And that's really the direction that, um, that, that the women community should be going in as well as the men community. Like Absolutely. we are going to be more successful as a team. So let's all work together to lift each other up and support each other and their, your success and your journey. I believe that so wholeheartedly. We can only impact, we can only have so much impact as an individual, but together the impact we can create is mind blowing. So yeah. I believe that. Well, thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you, Heather. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for spending this time with me on the Think Yourself Healthy podcast. I'm so grateful that you stopped by. If you could just take a minute to share this episode with someone you think who would love it, it would be amazing. Take a screenshot that you've listened to the episode and tag at Think Yourself Healthy and myself at Nutrition Vixen so that I can share it. Leave a review on iTunes to let us know how much you loved being here and what you want to hear next. Until next time, don't forget to think yourself healthy. Thanks again, guys. Bye.